All righty, NT8 on the porch. Now let's talk about the USS John S. McCain. Another collision with a 600-foot tanker. We're not going to jump jump to the blame cycle here. But what I am going to discuss is, okay, you got the McCain, you got the Fitzgerald, you got the USS Antietam that ran around, then you also had the uh, USS Lake Champlain that ran over a South Korean fishing boat. Four, four, of this, four of these since February of 2017. Now, I got a little bit to say about that. I reported to my first ship in uh, December of 83. She was just coming off deployment. They'd flown me out to Hawaii to catch the ship and ride it back. Learn my trade, so to speak. And then we sat in port for like a year. Maybe two years. Because we didn't deploy again until 85. Went on a Westpac. Now the reason we sat in port, the Navy didn't have money to put fuel in the tanks so we could go out and train. Remember, this is coming off Carter. You know Ronald Reagan was the president, you know, who wanted to build a 600 ship Navy. The House of Representatives are the ones that control the purse strings. So they wouldn't give up the money. So finally, once Reagan got his way, there wasn't any more sitting in court. We were out doing regular training. There's only so much training you can do for pure side. Can't do steering drills pier side. You can't do seamanship skills pier side. You have to be underway to do this. Now, what I'm thinking is Obama's had seven years in office and all he's done is cut the military, cut the military, cut the military. So I kind of wonder if that's what's going on right now with four of these over at a forward deployed base in Yokosuka. Second thought, fleet training group. Three of those four ships were in the seventh fleet and home ported in Yokosuka. Maybe fleet training group can't do the job they need to do because there's no money. I don't know. If you don't remember history, you're destined to repeat it. So I'm kind of thinking that's what's going on also. Back in the 83-84 time frame, we had aircraft carriers out of San Diego running in, grounding themselves on that peak out there by San Clemente Island. I think it was the Constellation that did that. Maybe it was the Kitty Hawk. I can't remember which one. ship I was on got into its own collision with another Navy ship. We were playing Red Guard. Just what 
I'm telling you. You can't train to be a sailor, pure sight. Hell, if you could do that, you'd come out of boot camp after USS Never Sail and you'd be a full grown seaman by then. Doesn't work that way. Also on my first ship, another proud remembrance. We were pulling into San Diego Harbor and hit a buoy, a channel buoy, a channel marking buoy. Put a red racing stripe down the side of the ship. Why is that? Because the navigator and quartermaster were unfamiliar with how to shoot landmarks and figure out their position in the channel? That's what I think. Oh, I've also got a picture of the hole in the side. You guys that have served on these early berths, tell me what's back there. I'm seeing reports of two birthing compartments flooded, shaft alley flooded, some kind of communication space flooded. But from the videos that I've seen, I don't see a heavy list like the uh, Fitzgerald one, so you guys tell me what's back there. As far as the 10 missing sailors, I'll bet you they find them in the birthing compartments or shaft alley or whatever else completely flooded out back there. So I'm going to be patient on this one as stuff develops. It's really, we're not getting a whole lot of information. So, NT8 on the porch. Subscribe, stay tuned. And as soon as I find stuff, I'll be sure and do a video. Alright? Talk to you later.